the Christian Navy, today we're going to look at the fellowship. The fellowship. Now, we looked at last time the warship, part one. Part two, fellowship. Seventeen times in the King James Bible in 16 verses. We're going to look at the Bible verses and see what the Bible says about fellowship. In the first place is Leviticus, of all places, 7 verse 2. In the place where they kill the burnt offerings, that would be Jerusalem, shall they kill the trespass offering. Oh, wait a minute. Verse, how did I get? Chapter 6 verse 2. I apologize. If a soul sin and commit a trespass against the Lord and lie unto his neighbor, I didn't take it. I didn't see it. I don't know. In which was delivered in him to keep. Okay, so can you watch this? Can you take care of this for me? And then they come back from vacation, come back from where they are, and it's gone. And, well, I don't know. To deliver him to keep, okay, for security, in fellowship, or a thing taken away by violence. And has deceived his neighbor. Look at that fellowship. I am giving you this this item. Because we are in fellowship. We are together. Preachers have said that fellowship is two men in a boat. Okay. Well... Here's my cooler with ice and soda. It's mine. And you get in a boat, you get out in the middle of the lake, you open up and the soda's gone. Hey, what happened to my soda? Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's a trusting that has been deceived. Psalms, Psalms, 94, Psalms 94, 20, shall the throne of iniquity, that's not God's throne, that's Satan, that's the world, have fellowship with thee. Now we're going to find this this throne. We're going to find iniquity and a, a, this fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law. So, if you thee are trying to live right, you today are a Christian. They weren't Christians in Psalms. You today are a Christian. Are you going to let the powers of the throne of iniquity fellowship with you? Are you going to join yourself with the team Democrats or the team Republicans? Are you going to take their side? And they are, will they be pleased with you? Notice, if we go to Acts chapter 2, two forty-two. watch, and they continue steadfastly, they didn't stop. That's important. In the apostles' doctrine, the teaching, that's what doctrine means, it means teaching. And fellowship, okay, 
and breaking of bread. Also, fellowship is different from breaking bread. And in prayer. So the teaching of the of the, the apostles at that time, that there was no New Testament, and the fellowship was communing with each other, speaking with each other, discussing with each, each other. Man, you get fellowship of Baptist churches today; <laughs> they're chowing down. You got people that uh, listen. We've been in churches where I'm just going to throw a number out there, but. You had 42 people come to church and you got 73 that come to fellowship. My wife knows that one time we were in the church and she pulled me up. She said, you know, there are more people here at this fellowship than there were in church Sunday morning. And I started watching that. And they'll say, well, you know, invite people to, well, you know, to get the gospel and all that. No, they don't. Rarely, rarely. They'll get a good time and a meal and whatever games that go with it. And then you send them off into hell. Because your average Christian, your average pastor, your average church today is not going to offend the world with fire. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. One, nine. God is faithful, amen, by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. So when was the last time, when was the last time that you had a physical meal with Jesus? Or rather, when was the last time in prayer or out of prayer, when was the last time you really had a good time with Jesus. You commune with him and he communed with you and, and your day went well and everything went right. Without a meal, without the hamburgers, without the chicken, You can commune with Jesus in a fellowship by God, given by God. I mean, there are people in other nations, they're starving to death, they're saved, and they're pleased in the Lord. We got to take Americanism out of the Bible. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 30. Uh -oh. First Corinthians 10. Uh, that's not it. I made a boo boo. Let's try 20. My writing is terrible today. Yeah, 20. But I say, Paul, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, unsaved people. You're a Christian. You're not a Gentile no more. If you are a Christian, you're no more Jewish. There's Jewish, which are God's people. You're Gentiles, which is unsaved. And there are Christians, the church. They sacrifice to devils and not to God. I mean, they will proclaim they, they serve God. Yeah, small GOD. Look at that big GOD. And would not that you should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot, you cannot be partaking of the Lord's table and the table of devils. So... There is a fellowship 
There is a gathering together with devils, the unsaved people. And I know people who just be at be, you know, they will go to a Catholic mass for their family. I mean, most of my family is gone, but in Connecticut, I've been I've been invited to weddings. My family is Catholic. I told them no. There have been funerals in the Catholic Church. I said, I'll meet you guys at the graveyard. I'm not going in there, and I'm not going to subject my wife and just my son then. All the statues of Jesus and Mary and whoever. I'm not going to suffer my family and myself for that priest. I don't want them part of that religion. I grew up in the in the, in the Catholic Church. I don't want them to, and I don't want to go back to it. I want to stay away from it. And listen, when it came to it, a lot of my family weren't offended. Matter of fact, a lot of people saw that I am strong in faith in a God and a Bible that they didn't believe in. The very fact is, I do believe, with a few exceptions, everybody in my family, I've, I've witnessed to some way and somehow about the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. And if they were going to have a, a family thing and, and, and all like that, and there was alcohol, I wouldn't go. No. Well, you're not, you're not going to drink. I don't want to even be part of it. I don't want to see it. I don't want my children to smell it. I don't want my wife to, to be subject to it. No. Definitely not. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians six fourteen. Be not unequally yoked together. With unbelievers. Don't marry an unsaved man. Don't marry somebody who has not put their faith and trust in Jesus. You are a saved Christian. You are a child of God. You are going to go up in a rapture. You're going to die and be absent from the body and present with the Lord. You are going to heaven by the blood of Jesus Christ. By faith in Jesus Christ alone, the way, the truth, and the light. Don't you dare marry an atheist, agnostic, Catholic, Jehovah Witness. You say, well, I, I know a, a, a Pentecostal and they're saved. Yeah, but they are following the, remember we just read about the devils? You don't partake of the devils and the cup and the table. And they go to the Pentecostal church, and you're going to go to the Baptist church, and you're going to live happily, happily ever after. That's a lie of Satan. For what fellowship? It says unbelievers. It's taken for granted that, you know, he's Christian. You're not going to get involved with a Christian. You shouldn't get involved with a Christian religion, but don't do it. For what fellowship, there's our word, what communion have un, have the righteous saved with the unrighteous laws? What communion, back that up with fellowship, so there we go. The biblical definition of fellowship giving us communion with light, with darkness. What concord, accord, have Christ with Belial? That's someone's just wicked. That's a wicked person. And what part has he that believeth Christian with an infidel, a non-Christian, an unbeliever? So, who are you communing with? 
And what the Baptist Church is taking communion, the you know the, the wine and the bread of the Lord's Supper, they have taken to communion, come with fellowship. All right, we're going to have a fellowship at the church. We're going to have a fellowship Saturday. We're going to have a fellowship at, at the roller skating rink. We're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs. We're going to have pizza. We're going to have games. We're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs. We're going to get a water. So whatever it is, we're going to have fun. Oh, yeah. The, the, the unsaved will get the gospel. No. What are you doing inviting unsaved people to church? The church is not, there are no unsaved people in the church. None. Oh, you know, they got to hear the gospel. The Bible says, go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Nowhere do you find in the New Testament vitamins of church. No. You are supposed to tell your family. You're to tell your neighbors. You tell your co-workers. You tell people at the laundromat. You tell people at the grocery store. You tell the cashier. You tell them about Jesus. It's not your pastor's job. It's not your Sunday school teacher's job. And then when they get saved, then they come into church because they are part of the church. They don't need to be voted as members of a church because they are the church. The church today, the last to see in church today, we put some some new emphasis and commandments and traditions of men that are not found in the Bible. I had one church, you know, you can't vote because you're not a member. Never told me I was supposed to be a member. I looked at the pastor and said, Pastor Wayman, I'm a member by my salvation in Jesus Christ. Well, you, you haven't been voted in by the people. Uh, voting, where do you see that in the Bible? Where do I see, you know, where did the, where do we see that the 11 disciples voted for Judas? They didn't vote for Paul. They didn't want Paul. Until uh, Silas, I think, some of them came and brought him in, and they didn't vote for nothing. They sent them out into the ministry. The church is surrounded with a fellowship without hamburgers and hot dogs with unbelievers. And there are unbelievers in the church who think they are believers. They think they are safe and they've been greatly deceived. Friend, that's wrong. Chapter 8, verse 4. Train us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. That's not hamburgers. That's back in Acts chapter 2. You sit down with the people and you discuss the teachings of the Bible. Now this is not, you know, sit down, read a Bible verse. Okay, what do you think it is? What do you think it is? What do you think it is? That's not Bible study. That's where a trained man by God sits down with a Bible, everybody else with a Bible, they open up to the passage of Scripture, there is no preaching, there's very few people, and he lays out, he fellowships with you, and you can have a cup of coffee, you can have a cup of tea, you can have cupcakes, you have whatever you want there. But it's no big thing. And it's for the purpose of learning and getting to know God or even each other. Now, this is not even like the prison ministries I've had where, you know, going and they sit in their seats and I'm up at a podium used to be and then I give them the Bible. That's Bible study. And there were people that were lost in that group. They're ones that came out to get out of their selves. It's a fellowship with the saints. The saints are 
living Christians. Unlike the Catholic Church that teaches saints are dead and approved by the Pope. Nonsense. Tell the Pope there's no hope in the Pope and only Jesus saved and he better get saved before he dies. That Pope will be hanging in hell forever. Galatians. I know you don't like my talk. Oh boy, it is nine or four. Let's look at four. Okay, let's look at nine. All right, nine. Galatians two nine. When James, Cephas, that's Peter, and John seemed to be pillars. Yeah, you know what pillars are, those things that stand up and hold the roof up. Perceived the grace that was given unto me, Paul. They gave to me, Barnabas, the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, they unto the circumcision, the Jews. So they gave us fellowship. You know, they gave us a little time together. They got together, you know, this is where you're going. This is your plan. Here's your map. Uh, here's your passport, whatever you needed to go. Here is Barnabas. This is what Barnabas can do. This is the talents of Barnabas. Barnabas, this is Saul. This is what Saul can do. You go to the Gentiles, and we're going to go to the Jews. Anything else? Any problems? There was no time for games. Ephesians 3 9. To make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God when created all things by Jesus Christ. The church is a mystery. And this mystery, one of the mysteries is Jews and Gentiles. Okay? It has nothing to do with meal and pasta and spaghetti. Nothing. Chapter 5, verse 11. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. All right, so, again, here's this unsaved, saved. Here's this wicked, here's this righteous. Here's this righteous and unrighteous. So you have, okay, let's say this. That you have a planned meal event. Oh, bite your family, bite your neighbors, bite your co-workers, but you know, invite them to come out. And they're unsafe. What are you doing inviting them to your church and your event? What are you doing putting the unsaved with the saved that Maybe the saved will look at the unsaved and say, oh, man, I should do that. I mean, after all, they came to the fellowship, they came to church. Maybe I should try that. And then you invite them to church, let's say you've got somebody who, who, who's known open in adultery. You don't reprove her? Well, you know, Bible that Jesus, the woman at the well, you know, and, and then the woman taking an adultery. Yeah, I know. I know. But there was no church then. The church is after Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. Paul walked up to this idol, to the unknown God, and said, hey, okay, people. This is what God has to say about it, and it's evil and it's wicked, and you're not supposed to do it.
You see, the church has got away from preaching. I got in trouble for, for you know, I told one guy, I said, I said, listen, drums are wrong. And the pastor got mad at me. I said, listen, I'm, the Bible calls you to reprove, rebuke with all long suffering in season and out of season. Preach the word. And then I got rebuked. Nonsense. And that church just had water slides and nonsense. Nonsense. Philippians 1 5. For the fellowship in the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scriptures was buried and rose again the third day according to scriptures. From the first day until now. So they met together. They got together. They had a, a, a union together. In the gospel. Okay. Maybe there were lost people there. They taught them the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Maybe there were saved people there. They taught the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what that fellowship was about. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Was it a big doodad and feast? I don't know. But they talked about the gospel. And it was many days. Chapter 2, verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation, encouragement in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, Holy Spirit. All right, so now here's the here's fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Now we saw you can have a fellowship with devils, or you can have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You can't be both. You're either going to be married to Christ as a Christian and commit an adultery with Jesus Christ, uh, with the devil, excuse me. Married to Jesus Christ and commit an adultery with Satan. That's an unbiblical union, like we read earlier. You know, you're not to have any concord. You're not to have any fellowship with a believer and the unbeliever. Friend, that's the Christian with, with being the bride of Christ and adulterizing yourself with the devil. You ought to have fellowship with your family. There are people who put more fellowships in church than they do their family. 3.10. Philippians 3.10. That I may know him, Jesus. I've got to know him. Let me see what I have here. No. I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made comfortable unto his death. There's the gospel. Death, sufferings and death, and resurrection. I mean, he didn't mention the burial, but I mean, two of the three parts of the gospel right there. And this suffering, I mean, this fellowship is of the suffering. Have you in some way, shape, and form suffered For the gospel of Jesus Christ. Have you tried going knocking on doors and somebody slammed the door in your face? That's suffering. I had one specific time where I'm preaching on the street and I got amplification. I had a woman come up, start pulling all the wires and all that and get right in my face. 
that's suffering. My daughter had a, you know, this man come up to a customer, and every cuss he could cuss had this little girl's face. That was suffering. Most Christians don't suffer. First John. First John. Chapter 1. Verse 3. That which we have seen and heard declare unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. Truly the fellowship is with the Father. So we've had fellowship with Jesus. We've had fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And we have fellowship with the Father. Don't go be sleeping around with the devil. Don't hold hands with Satan being a bride of Jesus Christ. And if people reject God, Jesus Christ, and his in the Holy Spirit, what are you doing in fellowship with them? Well, you know, I got to work, I got to make it. Okay, understand that. How about going bowling with them? How about going to the movies with them? How about going to the ball game with them? I heard another pastor, you know, one time he took his son to, to a football game and they were, they were cussing and drinking beer and all that. What the heck are you doing putting your son in that? I told my daughter, it used to be, when we were back in Connecticut, we go to the racetrack, and there's a small racetrack here. I said, they usually have a section, no smoke, it's called a family section. There's no smoking, and there's no drinking, and there's no cussing. If you don't have that, I'm not going. Verse 6, same chapter. If we say we have fellowship with him, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and walk in darkness, evil, wickedness, Satan, we do, li we do lie and do not the truth. So you got a Baptist church, oh, you know, we're Christians and all that. You're involved in wickedness, you're involved in the world, you're involved in paganism, but you are Christians, you are a lying church. When you got Easter bunnies put out on your table and Easter eggs, and that's all paganism, you're a liar. When you put a Christmas tree in your church and you jump from Jeremiah 9 to Jeremiah 11, you're a liar. And I don't say that. The Bible says that. And they'll be ranking on me and they'll be yelling at me. Okay, I just told you what the Bible says. I guess I suffered. Verse 7, but we walk in the light, righteousness, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. You, you know there's one problem as a Christian, and I had to throw in my Christian life. I did not sit in a church pew and light up a cigarette. When I got in the car, turned on the road, the, 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 off the driveway onto the road the church was on, then I lit my cigarette. I didn't want them to know. Do you bring that can of beer into the church and <clears throat> start drinking? Whiskey? The wine? You have your pornography uh, magazines. And there are times when you're together as, as you and D in the church, you you got to put that stuff away. 
and soon it's over with and you get in your car you get home how it comes Not too many Christians will gather together with somebody smoking a cigarette. But it's happened. You don't, as an aged Christian, you don't sit in the congregation at the unity of the saints and cussing. You hold your tongue. I want to read to you Noah Webster's 1828 Dictionary Fellowship, number one. Companionship. To be part of a companion. Society, consort, mutual association of persons on equal and friendly terms, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, Familiar intercourse. Number three, partnership, joint interest as fellowship in pain. That is the suffering. There's the suffering. My wife had cancer. And I remember there was this room. Where they had these tables, they'd be laying there, getting ready for the, the chemotherapy. And they'd be talking about their medication. They'd be talking about what the week was or the night was and how they could help each other. You know, try this, try that. Number four, company. A state of being together. Number five, frequency of intercourse. So, that's fellowship. And I believe that's far more different from the Baptist churches. I have very rarely, if not at all, gone to these fellowships, you know, where there's balloons and we're going to dunk the past. And no, I, I very rarely go to those. But let's see, wait a minute. I'll, I'll bring out my. Let me check something. Search. Right, I'm going to search. There is no fun, F-U-N, found in the King James Bible. But Christians want to have fun. There is witnessing. Christians don't want to do witnessing. They want to do invitation to church. They're a great church, a great church, and a great pastor. They get it all backwards. 